I've got this Arduino Uno shield I wanted to try to use. It's meant for prototyping. It's got a couple of push buttons and LEDs, soldering area and top side headers, and it just plugs into the Uno. But the headers are too short because when you start plugging it in and you want to fully dock it, it starts clashing on the power header and there's these header pins here on the Uno, at least on this one. And you can only <laughs> push it down so much and now you're touching the board. And you know, that's not really what I had in mind. It looks like they used pretty standard sized headers. And I happen to have these longer headers that just might do the trick. So I need to desolder these. I'm reluctant to use the hot air gun because even if I put a smaller tip, I don't want to melt these black headers right here. They're right beside the pins that I would need to heat up and the heat would go and cause damage. I don't have a proper electric desoldering pump where I could just put the nozzle right over the header pin, vacuum out the solder. I don't have one of those. Using a solder wick, or even a manual desoldering pump, it just doesn't always do a good job of removing all the solder from a joint. It might be okay for two pin or three pin devices where you can just get as much solder out as you want and then if there's a sweat joint remaining you can maybe use a screwdriver tip or a soldering iron tip and push the pin and free it. But in a header there's too many pins to be able to manipulate it that way and often the hole is really small compared to the size of the pin, so there's really not much clearance to even mechanically break that sweat joint. So I'd either want to use the proper electric vacuum desoldering tip, or I'm just gonna have to heat all these pins up together and try to let the connector fall out. So I'm trying to bridge all the pins, and now I can drag this ball of solder up and down the row of pins. Sometimes they will drop out fast if the size of the hole is a lot bigger than the size of the pins, but these are a good tight fit, so I need to pull as I heat all the pins. There it is. So that's one way to do it, heating all the pins and either the part will drop out or if it's in there tightly you can pull it out. So another way is to just turn this one long header into a bunch of single pin parts. So I'm going to pry off this plastic header body that's holding the pins together and treat them all as individual parts. So now I just have a bunch of single pins here. That should be a lot easier. So I'll grab the first one, heat it up on the solder side. That's a lot easier and cleaner and Maybe less risk of damaging the board because I don't have to linger so long with the hot iron. There. So I can clean up the solder later. So I'm going to pull out the headers on the other side of the board and then clean up these pads so I can put the new headers in. With the headers out, now I need to get this solder out of the holes so I can put the new headers in. So I'm going to use flux, of course, to help the solder flow. And now I will use the solder wick, so I'm going to not move this around. I don't want to scrape the pad. I'm just going to heat it, let the solder flow into the wick. So I'll try this again because I filled up the area of the solder braid that I was working on first. And after doing that on that first hole three times in a row, keeping lots of flux here so that everything flows, I finally have a clearance where I can take one of these pins from the header I just removed and I can get that through the board. So that hole is done and I'll move on to the next. So I'll move the wick along to an unused part, press down on the wick on the pad gently but enough pressure to make contact, give it a couple of seconds, pull it away and see how it looks. It's still clogged, so I move to another clean part of the wick because it filled it. There's probably a lot of solder in here because of adding all that extra to get the pins out. And three times it looks like finally the hole is clear, just like the last pad. So those first two are now clear. I'll take an LED 
and put it through those first two holes. No problem. So I'm just going to keep on going and clean up all of these header pins and try to get the new headers in. So I've now used the solder wick to clean out the holes on both sides. And I did mess up. I broke one pad right here. You can kind of see that second one in from the left. It's not shiny because there's no copper left. I left the iron on that pad too long and I should have known better. I was just not thinking clearly. Now I want to put those longer header pins on. So I've aligned them by plugging them into the board I'm going to dock to. So now I just need to align this, plug this in so I know it's going to be straight. Okay, so I've got all those four headers aligned and you can see now there's a lot of clearance above this header on the Arduino. Everything is down as tight as it will plug in eventually. We also now have clearance above this power jack. Not much, but it is clear. And there's nothing else obstructing. So right here there's one header pin that you can see doesn't have a plastic shroud on it. But I wanted it all aligned. It's all the correct height. So I can solder these on this side. And that's where I broke the pad and I needed the pin accessible. So with this docked properly I'm going to solder all these headers and then work on that one with the broken pad. Well okay those are soldered down reasonably well. I should be able to remove these boards from each other. Now we've got the new headers in place. For this pin with the broken pad where I need it to connect it over to this header in front of it, I was going to put a little wire link there, but it's so close I was able to just get a solder bridge across there. I had this header plugged into the Arduino part way to keep the pins at the right height and aligned straight. Then I just heated it up enough to do a proper reflow keeping it in place and allowing excess solder to bridge between the two pins. That should be good enough for around the workbench. And mechanically it's soldered to the bottom side pad as well, so it's pretty rugged as it is. Should do the job. I probably wouldn't ship that to a customer of any kind, but for my purposes, this does what I need it to do. Maybe I'll dab some epoxy or hot glue here just to kind of help it out a bit, but it's good as it is. And now I have an Arduino shield I can work with and it's rugged enough I can now push buttons or such on here and I'm not rocking on this power jack or this header back here. Good to go.